Hello everyone, I'm Rachel Tessman from StampYourArtOut.com. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Andover, Minnesota, and I'm here to bring you an online paper crafting class. And it is Wednesday, April 12th, 2023 at 11 a.m. as I'm coming to you live. What a difference 12 days can make, at least here in the state of Minnesota. On April 1st, we were covered with lots of snow everywhere and just crazy, right? And today we're supposed to be in the 80s. <laughs> Our snow is melting very quickly, um, to say the least. Anyways, welcome, welcome. I invite you to like, comment, subscribe. Please join in. Have fun. Um, if you're watching during the live, yes, make sure that you're logged into your Google account if you're on YouTube so that you can um, comment during the live. It's always fun to see the conversations that go on. Also, if you're watching from Facebook, chime in. We'd love to hear your comments, see how you're doing, all that kind of stuff. And I love hearing from you, not only to get, get to know you and you know, know what's going on in your world, but I learn so much from my viewers. So I appreciate when you share your tips and ideas as well. So on that note, let's welcome two special people. We have Lisa Marshall on Facebook. She is my moderator there. She's, oh, I have things falling over too. Um, she's my moderator there. She is here to help answer questions and um, make sure that everybody's getting what they need um, during the live. And then on YouTube, we have Trisha Josephs. And so welcome to both you gals. I appreciate you so much and so do the viewers. In this video, I'm going to share a real simple card. Now, it may not look simple and it can be hard if you're gonna do lots of extra layers around it, but the technique itself, um, the layout, which is called a starburst layout, is super simple when you um, see what I have to share. It's amazing. And the ombre papers that I'm going to be using today make it even more spectacular. Um, people can do this technique, this pattern with, you can do it with, you know, any kinds of designer papers or just different colors of cardstock even. Um, you could do it with different yellows to make a sunshine, but it's just amazing with ombre papers. So I'm going to be using the um, 2024 through 26 in color glimmer paper is what it's called, but it has the ombre dark to light design for each color. And um, I've done this card in the past. Uh, and so I just couldn't resist doing one more card with this glimmer paper because it is amazing um, paper. And I'm also going to be using the Conversation uh, dies and stamp, I'm sorry, Conversation Bubbles dies and stamp set. And when you buy them together, you save 10%. These are also, oh, all three of these items are outgoing products. They are last chance products. You're going to be saying goodbye to them pretty soon. Um, hopefully they won't sell out after, uh, before this video is done <laughs> so that you can get your hands on them if you fall in love with the card. So sit back and enjoy or participate in the conversation. Um, let's see what else do I want to share? I think that's it. So let's go over to the, uh, the sheet that shows the measurements and supplies. So I'm going to bring you over to my computer, which I guess I don't have connected yet. Hang on. We're just going to bring that into play. We're going to make sure that we are able to, there we go. Okay. Now I can bring you over there. <laughs> There's always something. It's alive right? It's a live video, so we're going to have a little flaws here and there. This is the PDF sheet that you're going to be able to download when my blog post that contains the, the recording of this video goes live at 12.15 p.m. Central Time, so a little over an hour from when we go live. Once you're there in that blog post, and the link, by the way, is in the description of the video, at least on YouTube right now, and I'll get it transferred over to Facebook, but um, once you're in that blog post, you'll be able to click on the the link for this so you can download it you can um, reference it later on you can keep it on your computer um, because these things here are clickable links you know so if you want to shop later on or printing it off is totally fine too it has the data has the name it has the supply list it has the measurements and it has some images some photos of what i'm sharing so hopefully it's a good resource for you these items here the bundle the cling set um stamp set and the dies plus the 2022 through 24 in color glimmer paper. Again, they are leaving. They're going to be gone. The last day is May 1st, unless they sell out beforehand, because there are some things that are selling out before the last day. The new catalog begins on May 2nd. All right, so I'm going to bring you back, and I think I'm going to bring you to my desktop now. 
Um, this is the Conversation Bubbles stamp set and dies. Again, you save 10% when you buy them together. Uh, you can see how they coordinate. All of these little images here can be die cut, and then you have some extra words that you could put inside, maybe this um, section here, or you could even stamp this in a color. It looks like it's in black, but you can choose whatever color you stamp it in. So if you stamp this, say, in pink, then you could stamp some words in a darker color on top. Um, you can stamp in, in, um, in white embossing powder too, right? So if you wanted to, you could have a black uh, little conversation bubble and then put white words on it with embossing powder. But we're not going to do embossing today. We're going to do some quick, simple stuff. I'm going to bring in what I have left over of the glimmer paper because I love this stuff so much. Um, I treat it as um, accent, kind of like embellishment pieces. You could have a strip and just put it underneath. I'll just grab this piece. You could put it underneath your cardstock so that you just see a hint of glimmer on a project. Uh, you could take and punch out tiny little shapes. I used the glimmer paper to punch out an even larger shape. I did a couple fish for some cards. So it's it's great in as far as that goes. And the colors are magnificent. These are colors that are sticking around. So this is another reason why it's good to get this. You're going to have um, all the in-color uh, colors in here. You've got the Sweet Sorbet, the Parakeet Party, Tahitian Tide, Orchid Oasis, and Starry Sky. Uh, again, I've used it up. <laughs> I love it so much. Um, I have a few sheets left, so we're going to be cutting into the uh, uh, those sheets, and I think we'll start. How does that sound? So um, let's bring in our trimmer. And you can actually do two cards at the same time. You can prepare two cards at the same time if you want to. What we're gonna do is we're gonna cut it in half this way. This is our eight and a half by 11 card stock. We're gonna cut it in half this way, and then we're gonna score it down the middle and trim off an end. Or you can just cut it to the size you need and score it at four and a quarter inches, and then you'll have that, that section. So if I was gonna, if I were to do two cards at the same time, I would trim off my extra inch right now because I want a piece that is seven and a half inches in this direction. Not eight and a half, we're gonna remove an inch. So I'm gonna trim that off and then I'm gonna score part way at four and a quarter inches. This would normally be halfway if we did the eight and a half inch total, right? We're gonna score at four and a quarter inches. So I've got that lined up here. And then we're going to turn it in this direction and cut it in half at five and a half. And now, oops, with the cutting blade. <laughs> and now we have two card bases. Hang on. Lately, I've gotten a lot of sticky little things. Oh, that's not good. I guess that was uh, ink of some sort. Well, we're not going to. Yeah, we can use that one, actually. We'll use this one. Um, so you can see we have two card bases, and we are going to be covering up the surface of the front. So we'll use this one just to prove that it's totally fine. But yeah, we have two card bases ready to go. I'm going to set that over here for just a second and we'll give this a good crease with our bone folder. This can be scrap or you can use it for die cutting. I'm going to just work with one at a time. Let's go ahead and trim the glimmer paper. All right. So the glimmer paper, and I'm going to bring this in just a second here. There we go. The glimmer paper is a little more rough on one side, obviously, because you have the glimmer. But this kind of glimmer paper is the kind that Vicki would love. <laughs> My friend Vicki does not like it when glitter falls off under her fingers. Stampin' Up! has really got some great glimmer slash glitter paper. Um, we don't have the stuff that flakes all over the place. so. What I want to suggest though, when you're cutting with a trimmer like this where you're slicing through, flip it over and then cut. Now with the, this glimmer paper, there is a direction. There's a dark to a light. So we want to make sure that we're not cutting this way and doing our strips. We want to get both the dark and the light in each little section. So we're going to flip it over this way and we're going to cut one and a half inches off. So I'm using this side of my trimmer here and I brought it to the one and a half inch mark on that side. You can also tell that it's at one and a half inches because it's a full six inch piece and we've moved over 
to the one and a half inches less than that, which would be four and a half inches, okay? Six, take away one and a half is four and a half. So we're gonna cut that. And now you can see what we've got here. We've got a dark to light piece and it's one and a half inches by six. You're gonna do that several times. You can get one, two, three, four out of one six by six paper. You can also bring in another six by six piece and cut three more pieces. That should give you, let's see here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven, and then we're gonna divide each of these in half. Seven times two gives us 14, we need 13. So you're gonna to need to have uh, two of these six by six pieces for one card. And you're gonna to say to yourself, gosh, I'm wasting a lot of glimmer paper when it comes to a certain step, but I'm sure you will find uses for it, especially if you're die cutting from it later on or things like that. All right, so yes, cut so that it's upside down and it just avoids having this come in closer contact right with the blade. Yeah, you know, it slices through this portion much easier first. We're gonna um, flip this over and I'm just looking at my, my cheating uh, pile over here. Um, I just wanna make sure I'm doing this right because I've already cut some strips. We're gonna cut and there we go. I'm gonna cut it diagonally. Now you could cut it diagonally this way or you could cut it diagonally this way, it doesn't matter. I just wanna be consistent with mine because I think it's easier. Um, all right, so now I've got it lined up so that that corner and that corner are in the, the channel, the part that dips down where I know I'm gonna cut on my trimmer. And I'm gonna lay this down on here, pull my fingers out of here, hold on to the corners that are sticking outside, hold those firm, Cut, starting in the middle, go out, and then come back in and go out. And now I have two strips that are kind of triangular. If you cut off the ends, you know, it's, it's pretty cool. Isosceles triangles, right? Okay, so we have a dark to light and a light to dark. We're gonna cut one more, just to make sure we're doing this right here. I gotta lay this over the top again. <laughs> I don't know, I like being consistent, it's just me. I think it helps, maybe. I, maybe not on this card, but if you're gonna do bigger pieces, it might help. Okay, so now we have two more pieces. And all together, I think I have 14 prepared for you because I've already cut into another sheet. So I'm gonna bring those in. You can see we have our, our dark to light. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Oh, I had another one somewhere else. So I have 13 total. And I want to make sure, because I should have brought that other one out here. Hang on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There are seven of those and six of these then? Yes. So I want to start with this one because there's more of this one. If you have 14 sitting out because you didn't put one away like Rachel did, then you can start with either one. But I want to start with this one. Okay. So the light going into the dark. And we're gonna grab our card base that's got smudge on it. And we're gonna take our seal adhesive now. So we're using seal adhesive and we're gonna put this flat um, tape all over the place. I think it's easiest if you're using seal rather than a glue on a project, where you, uh, this pattern here, because it's gonna take a while to add these and you don't want your glue drying and getting kind of like clumpy and, and cause a lift. So not, not isosceles, it's scalene. Well, it is this way, yes, but if you cut it off that way, then it's isosceles. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to confuse you guys. Yes, isosceles is the, is the two sides are the same and one isn't, but this is definitely a scalene triangle. I'm so sorry, I didn't mean to, I, I was, I was thinking a different thing than what I was explaining. <laughs> sorry. Thanks all you math people. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add seal adhesive and I'm adding it all the way around the edges. I just opened that up so it was a little bit easier to, oh, I know why I was opening it up. I wanna open it up here. So I don't accidentally put seal adhesive on the other part of my card. So I'm going around all four sides and you can get real close up to the edge if you want to. You don't necessarily need to. Um, maybe just on these two sections here, it's important. And then you're gonna go all the way through and cover it 
a good amount. You could even go this way. You're gonna use up a lot of seal. <laughs> Basically, you want that whole thing slathered to a good extent, okay? All right, then we're gonna take our ruler and you can eyeball this. You can use your grid paper as a guide. But do you see our card is five and a half inches across. We're going to start our first one at the one and a half inch mark. So you can see, and it doesn't have to be exact, but I use the ruler just as a guide to kind of get me started there. I put it at the one and a half inch spot. <laughs> I was, I, I loved teaching. Yeah, scalene, isosceles, equilateral, math was fun. Well, math is fun. It's not was fun. It is fun. Okay, and oh, and then we go back and forth. So you see what I'm doing here? I'm pushing that one up against the one I just did. I'm going to do this one next because I want to just go back and forth on all these. And you can already see the beauteousness of this design. It's just crazy cool. So every time I lay this down, I'm trying to go to that section for the point. It is going to go a little off, though. I just have to tell you it's going to go slightly off because... We can't be super exact on this. But as long as you're connecting through here and you've got no white gaps in there, having your base of your cardstock show through, then you're good. See, we almost had the base of the cardstock show through. Okay, so we keep going around and around. And now you can see where there's gonna be some waste. Um, all of this is gonna get cut off, but you're still, you're still gonna use it. I know you will. Because again, this is great for embellishments, for die cutting little pieces out of it. We just keep going around, connecting those edges. And 13 of these will be plenty and perfect. I know it looks like it's not, but because we only have like, what, four pieces left? But watch how these fill in. It's just amazing. One, two, and this is where you really want to make sure that adhesive was closer to the edge because you're only you're only hanging on to that amount like that and if for do you see this if by chance you have a little white showing like I did then you lift up that last piece and you shove it even further in okay and now we have no white showing we have a little bit of an overlap but we're just gonna trim that off <laughs> thanks Pammy Okay, so we will take and flip this over now. Now what you can do is you can use your scissors, your snips scissors, and you can trim right up to it like that. The snip scissors is a little bit shorter <laughs> than other scissors. Or you can take, and I'll show you really quick here after snip this one, you can take a longer bladed scissors like this and it goes a little bit faster. One other tip, if you want to, is to take and open it up, and maybe this is more comfortable for you, to take and line it up inside your trimmer like this, and you can kind of feel that blade go right up against it, and you can slice them all off at once that way. So you have options for how you how you trim it off. Now we want to fix this. This is that little section that had that kind of came out of there and we can just trim that too and it makes it all go away. This spot here sometimes can look kind of messy so you don't necessarily want that to be showing. Although on this card, gosh that's pretty darn perfect looking. <laughs> I did pretty good on that. Um, yeah, it can get messy though. It can be where you know the pieces aren't connected correctly. So in this um, type of pattern, it's good to have like something here on top of the focal point, whether it be a half circle, if you're gonna make like sunshine. Um, it's called a starburst, although I can see it called a sunburst too, right? Let's just put that off to the side for a minute. And before we tidy this up and do some die cutting and stamping, I wanted to show you what I was this is kind of fun. So after you're done die cutting, you can take and stack these guys. And and just for just for the fun of it, right? You stack these all together. And then what you end up with, <laughs> I don't know why I was doing this. It was like relaxing for me or something. Where are they? Oh, here they are. What you end up with after you rubber band them 
rubber bind them, rubber band them, are like mountainous looking things. <laughs> They're kind of cool. Anyways, yeah, yeah. That was just for fun. You can give your kids all these extra pieces and they can do all sorts of fun things with them. Maybe put them back together in a puzzle, right? We're going to stamp now. We're going to be using the Conversation Bubbles stamp set. And I've got a couple images in here. I think I'm going to stamp the um, word. I'll get a look on my card here. I think it's sweet. Yeah, sweet. And here it is. There's my sweet. And then the word wow. And I want to do a star. Okay. And we will grab some dies. And we're going to do some die cutting with stars. We're going to also use, um, where is my finished card? It's here. There it is. Okay, we're going to use this die. We're going to use this one. And I think that's it for this card. But I have a second card that's finished to show you too, which you might have already seen in the PDF, obviously. Um, so this one we're going to die cut on the black paper and on the white. Uh, let's do the white first. Let's do a star out of the black and let's do a star here. So we're going to stamp these images on the white and then we'll die cut an extra black star. Let's bring in our Tuxedo Black Memento ink. This is super quick card, you guys. There's no, no coloring involved, although you certainly could color these. We'll just ink these up, stamp them down. Hopefully I have a large enough scrap. I do, but that is not real clear. Oh, much better. Okay, there's one. There's another, and you would want to do a couple of those. I don't have the exact size blocks I need, but we're just grabbing from our desk here. <laughs> and then we need a suite. Okay, and we're gonna put those out of the way so that they don't get ink on anything, because normally you want to clean off your stamps, close up your ink pads before you start your next project or section of your project, because you don't want to get ink on anything, right? And I'm gonna grab my stamp and cut and emboss machine. I did list the larger stamp and cut and emboss machine because if you're going to do a lot of stamping, I'm sorry, a lot of die cutting and a lot of embossing, you're going to want the larger one. But I'm going to bring back the boho one. This is the boho blue. This was a special machine that people could get if they got the starter kit during celebration, which was January and February. Oh gosh, let's go through these again. One and then two twos. Okay. Um, but uh, it's available again for demonstrators. So if you're on the demonstrator side of things, uh, shout out if you're a demonstrator. If you're on the demonstrator side of things, you can get the Boho machine again, even if you got one earlier, you can get a second one. So yay for us. Oops, let's flip that the right, right direction. There. And then I'm gonna use some uh, sticky tape. Sorry, I'm going to use some sticky tape. I've just got some post-it sticky tape. You could use sticky notes. You could use washi tape, although sometimes that can be kind of strong. And I'm just going to press this on here to hold it in place. Press this one. Let's see, it goes that way. Oh, with this star die, there is a longer section of the longer point, and that lines up with the longer point of the star. Sometimes images are so hard to line up, but that's the hint on that one. Let's see, hopefully that won't move on us. And then we have <laughs> this one to die cut. And that one is okay if it moves just slightly, but we're gonna come in, we're gonna press this down, and we're gonna send it on through. I'm put my hand over the top of this here. Okay, and you're gonna see something special about these dies. These dies, at least quite a few of them in our uh, collection of dies do double die cutting. So you get this frame piece and you get the inside piece for a lot of the dies. Let me bring those back over here. So you can see you've got like these extra wide areas. That's because they also cut out a frame. So you have one, two, three, four, and then the one we're using. We have five of them that will do that. And another thing that's interesting, can you see there's like embossing on it? So you even get a texture on a lot of them. These are a few other 
frame. Let's see, that one's just smooth. There's one that's just smooth. There's one that has little tiny polka dots. This one has larger kind of dot images on it. This one has lines on it. And this one has lines on it. So there's um, quite a few different frame pieces for that. We're going to keep that one. We're going to pray that our star stayed still. <laughs> Where is it? There we go. Oh good, our star stayed still, so it, it cut out just great. We forgot to die cut our black one, so we need to do our black one really quick. There's our wow. See, even, even this post-it tape is pretty strong. It's hard to peel off. Be careful when you peel your paper away. Let's set that there, and we'll just do another star. And you want to do two of these and two of the black ones. I'm just doing one. You know what? Let's save a little paper, Rachel. Move that into the corner. Then you can use a larger scrap later. <laughs> All right, so we have another black star because I cut some pieces ahead of time. So there's, there's all those that we just did. I'm going to set these dies into my little hexagonal tray because I don't want to lose them. This is a magnetic tray that holds them. See? They won't fall out. That is from the Country Hive, by the way. Gotta love it. When you're working with small dies, you need something like that. We're going to put this machine away. So yeah, if you're a demonstrator, grab up another blue machine. Give it as a gift. They're so cute and they're great. They're portable. Okay, now we'll bring in the pieces that I had prepared already. Here's one, two, and three. And we'll start assembling this card. Okay, there, we got our pieces ready. Um, let's start with the one that's gonna go over this center area here. So keep your card closed. In fact, if you want to, you can put something heavy on it. Let's just put a set of new markers on it. <laughs> All right, and we're gonna connect these so that they're kind of like just puzzle piece together, right? They're filled in together. We're gonna flip them over and we're gonna add some glue dots. So I'm gonna bring in my glue dots and let's use the take your pick tool to just kind of take them off of there. And we're gonna connect with the glue dot those two sections. It's gonna prevent it, oh, I put it on the wrong side. <laughs> Hang on, throw that one away. We want it on the other side. Okay, let's do that again, Rachel. So we're gonna lift up a glue dot and we're gonna put it, do you hear the dogs barking? That's because we have our windows open. It's gonna be 80 today. It's crazy. I have a skirt on, one of those uh, skirt short things, you know? Okay, so we've got our glue dots and our glue dots are gonna hold those two pieces together. I'm putting them only on the, uh, the left side, because that's where we're gonna connect it. It's gonna kind of stick out a bit, and we don't wanna put glue dots on that side. So let's do a few more. The more glue dots you have, the better. And I recommend glue dots or dimensionals on glimmer paper. I just think you have more success at things staying in place if you're using glue dots or dimensionals. We'll put one down here, and then we'll stick one in the middle. Ooh, sticky, there we go. We'll put one right here. Okay, so you can see I just added adhesive on that half and it's gonna hold the frame. So now we put this here, like that, and, and we flip it to make sure that our glue dots are not showing, because on my other card I think they did. This piece is gonna go on with dimensionals. And just for fun, I thought I'd show you and remind you that we do have black dimensionals. Um, especially if you're doing a really dark card, it's nice to have your dimensionals also dark so that if anybody looks at your card from the side accidentally, they would see that it just continues. It just has that dark look to it, right? So we have black dimensionals. They come in a pack uh, that has the fuller size dimensional. So there's two of those and then two of the small size. This is gonna get overlapped kind of in that spot there. And then we'll add um, 
a few of the a few more of these. Let's take our glue dots and we'll just stick each one of these on here. Do you do this too, you guys? When you're when you're gonna glue a bunch at once, you just kind of get them all prepared. <laughs> so we've got that set. Tear that off here. There. Stick them down really hard to make sure that they're clinging. Okay, and we'll pick this one up and stick that kind of in this corner. Um, let's put one. I'm looking at my finished sample again. Got to cheat. Well, and it just makes more sense when you see the blog post later on if I try to get somewhat close to what I already created. So that's where I, and then I don't have to think either, right? So it goes faster. So that's kind of how I laid those out, but then I filled in with some sparkles because you got to have sparkly embellishments on a card like this too because this isn't enough sparkle. <laughs> so let's grab a big one and put that here, here, where did I put it? About there. Grab a medium, stick that up there. And I think we have one more. Yes, and that is down here. And then I took my stamp, one more star, and a little bit of ink. And I put one more star over here, where it doesn't get seen when the card is closed, but when it's open, ta-da, even more stars. So this would be a great card for a graduation coming up, for any kind of celebration, really. I mean, you could put happy birthday on the inside, um, anything that's a celebratory type of card. Thank you, everyone. I love your sweet words. Oh, thanks. Okay, so did you see this little hint here? Because we got new stuff. We got new stuff. Um, some of you that watched my, my live last week you know that I had um, some new stuff come in, but I focused on the colors, right? Oh, I have another card to show you too. I focused on the colors and that um, allowed me to really do an in-depth kind of presentation on comparing colors. I'm just setting this stuff out of the way because we're gonna bring in some new things. Uh, and I wanna make sure that my dyes and stuff like that don't get lost in the mess. So. Let me show you the other card I did. Alrighty, I think, I think we're tidy. Oops, let's put this out of the way too. The other card that I did was this one. So I used the extra Parakeet Party um, Glimmer Paper. There's the inside of the card. I'll just go like that so you can see them all at once. Right now, this one here, I put oh yay <laughs> on that one with an exclamation mark. So it's another celebratory card, and it's using different dyes in these three areas. But you can still make um, another card that has a similar uh, feel to it, only with just different words. And again, just like little sticky things all over. <laughs> Anyways, I got to do a room cleaning. It looks like, but that's the parakeet party. This is the Tahitian tide fun. I can imagine this with um, sweet sorbet, um, you know, and the other colors too. And uh, your stamp set, your stamp set has other things in here. So it doesn't have to be just a wow, a celebratory type of card. It can be um, someone, you know, commenting on lovely food that they're either giving or getting. Um, thank you. You know, obviously you could do just a hello or a note, sweet note type of thing. Um, yeah, so there's lots of messages in there. It's it's a great all-around stamp set that I think would be a good addition um, if you if you take and look it up to Pinterest wise or just Google some images of cards people created. You'll be just wowed. It's amazing all the fun cards that you can make with it. It's just a festive set. All righty, I think once I move this glimmer paper, we are ready to roll to the next part of the video. The next part of the video is where I'm going to share some peeks at products. Oh, and I have this card. This is the one I did about a year and a half ago, and this was with some celebration paper that we had that was kind of ombreish. Well, it was ombreish. So that was the one that made me say, I got to do another one. So kind of fun, right? Let's bring it in. This is the new catalog. It will debut on May 2nd. I'm going to zoom out a bit. 
This catalog will be available um, to look at online also on May 2nd. So if you are not getting a copy from your demonstrator, you're not a demonstrator getting a complimentary copy, um, or you're not on my mailing list because you didn't, you didn't ask, um, <laughs> then make sure that you check online on May 2nd for the digital copy of this. Really fun to see peaks of the new products right here, right? Okay, so as I had shared, oh, and I can't open it up yet because that's the rules. As I had shared, we have new markers. We have um, new ribbons. Gosh, we got a lot of goodies in just colors. We have um, ink pads, right? So let's just start with the markers. Why are they new, Rachel? Well, because they actually have a different tip. So if you look at your Stampin' Write markers from before, you're going to see that there's still a brush end. So there's still a brush end. But on the other end, instead of having a fine tip, there is a fine bullet tip. So it allows you to still write really thin, but it's a bullet tip. And so the inks, it's just a better inking end. I'm grabbing an old marker. This is the older style marker. And let me just set that down so I don't get ink all over me. And I'll take the caps off. So there's the, oops, there's the difference between the two. Okay. So you have um, a similar brush end, but I hear that the, the brush end is even improved. So yay on that. And here's the difference on the tips for the writing end. Gotta love it. Now you don't have to replace your other markers. There will be an opportunity to just buy the new colors uh, of markers. So you don't have to worry about buying full sets like this to get them all. I'm getting all of them new. <laughs> just because I want to show, you know, if I, if I start coloring with them, I want to make sure that I'm showing what's, what's newer. Anyways, um, so there you go. That's... The newer markers and they come in the new colors this is the new in color line make sure you watch that video plus the other new colors or returning colors are back berry burst we've got lemon um, lemon lime twist we've got our azure afternoon color all kinds of fun goodies in there okay ink pads ink pads have stayed the same but except on the back oops that's an older one on the back and that one's hard to read <laughs> On the back side, for those of us that speak English, um, kind of a plus, we have two labels that are in English now. So you can put, some of us put, well, I put them on the front. And then I also put one on the inside in this little section here. So you can make that one be, instead of like the blank one, because it comes with a blank little label too, you could put the one that has the word on it. So, and how do you get the labels off? You peel this little thing off like that and you can get out all of them. Okay, so that's ink pads. The ribbons, these are the um, in color ribbons. We have new in color line and they're more of kind of a, a fall um, subdued kind of color line, um, but very fun for, you know, more regal type cards, um, um, more like fall time, time of the year too. And then there's just kind of like this metallic look to three of them. So you have pebbled stone, uh, pebbled stone, is that what it's called? Pebbled, pebbled, oh, it's on this side. Pebbled path, we have copper clay and we have wild wheat. And this obviously looks like copper. This one has kind of a dark silver, like an aged silver. And this one has kind of a dark or antique gold to it. So you got kind of a metallic look going on with some of those colors. And then you brought the 80s back. <laughs> Very fun. And these ribbons are gorgeous. They have a really nice texture to them. And because of how they're, they're woven together, they kind of reflect and have like a sheen or a shine to them. Very pretty. Um, of course, we have the colors in the card stocks as well. And you can buy like packs of just the new colors. So Boho Blue, I saw the shout out there. Yes, the machine is beautiful, I agree. We have re-inkers, and it is suggested that when you buy new ink pads that you get the re-inkers because the inks are formulated at the same time and it'll just help to maintain the life of your ink pad a little longer. Okay, let's bring in some other things. 
other than color. We have embellishments and we have some um, other products. I'm going to start with the embellishments. These are some fun new embellishment dots, little adhesive dots. They're called in color dots, the 23 through 25. So you can see they got in the Pebbled Path, the Wild Wheat, uh, Moody Mauve, Copper Clay, and Boho Blue. I've memorized it. Yay. You can maybe see it better across on the white. I don't know. They weren't looking that great on the yellow. There we go. They're beautiful. They're just gorgeous. So there's one set of embellishments. Another set of embellishments that we could buy early, not really embellishments, but another set of ribbons that we could buy early is the Ribbon Duo Combo Pack. And this is the Lemon Lime Twist color. This is um, Petal Pink. And yeah, just pretty types of um, woven grow grain ribbons. This is an eighth inch. This is a quarter of an inch. I'm going fast through these, you guys. You may have seen sneak peek videos or we call them unboxing videos, um, but I did have this special request from several of you asking me to share uh, uh, the sneak peeks as well. So I'm just doing that real quick. I do have some um, products that maybe you might not have seen on another video, right? So these are our two, um, let's see, our six by six. Um, and these are in family packs and you get, you can pick any family and they're going to have the same type of thing where the patterns are the same. So here is the brights pack. You can kind of see the new colors in the brights there too, right? So this is the brights pack. And when you flip them over, this is what the pattern is on the other side. So that's the patterns that you're going to see in the families of in color, um, not in color, in families of six by six paper. This is a pack of paper called the Bright and Beautiful, and it comes in a suite of product. You can get it in a suite of products that has kind of birthday celebratory stuff, but I couldn't buy it all. I could not buy it all, you guys. I, <laughs> yeah, anyways, um, I got a lot though, but this is that beautiful six by six paper, and it does feature a lot of the new colors. So you can see these fun designs and I should flip them over too. So you can see the fun designs on one side, gorgeous. And then here's the designs on the other side. I can see some cards coming up that have the starburst pattern. <laughs> Wouldn't these be perfect for that? Oh my goodness sakes. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to make more cards just realized it. I don't, didn't even think about it till just now as I'm fanning them out for you. Here's more patterns from that pack. Okay. And the flip sides look like that. Yeah, these would look cool with the Starburst pattern. <laughs> okay. And then here are the remaining ones. And I did cut into this one already because I'm preparing some make and, make and take stuff for my team event coming up in the late April. So, and there's the other side. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Okay, so that is again the bright and beautiful, <laughs> bright and beautiful uh, six by six designer series paper. I have another set of designer paper. Now this is 12 by 12. And this one is really um, gonna, gonna be popular. It's so pretty, it's got, Lots of different blues in there and whites. Um, just it's it's a gorgeous um, set of pattern papers too. So on one side you see kind of just a regular monochromatic kind of pattern going on, and on the flip side you have more of the design. And you see the cute little bunnies, so you could cut them out and make little bunny cards. <laughs> so that's one pattern. This is the other one, so you can see both sides of that one. This one has. Looks like doves, doves and some flowers. Okay. And then we have this pattern with this on the opposite side and my upline and friend Susan Canfield is just so in love with this suite. She has already created with it and she has discovered, and I didn't get a chance to comment on her post. It was late at night. I was tired, but I saw her sharing a card recently with the embossing folder and how it paired up. It has the same 
pattern as this sheet of designer paper, you guys. Crazy. There it is right there. Can you see that? So very fun. That's part of the suite. Um, so we have the paper, we have the embossing folder. There's a stamp set. I didn't get the stamp set, but I did get the dies. So I'll show you that. Here we have little foxes. Cute, cute, cute. And on this one, there's trees. And on this one, it looks like just flowers, floral design all over. The colors that come in this one are limited, not as many as the one the last one. So I can read them off, balmy blue, boho blue, um, misty moonlight, and night of navy. So again, that's an embossing folder as part of the pack, which is countryside blossoms. And then these are the dies, and they are called countryside corners dies. And they're those nesting kind of dies where they all layer up on top of each other. <laughs> I can see some of you are already shouting out, that's my, that's my favorite suite. I love it, I love it. Okay, I'm gonna move these over just so I don't spill things. I might as well bring this over at the same time. Okay, next is Zany Zoo. So this particular suite is called Zoo Crew and it's cute, it's super cute. So it's got a stamp set, a set of dies, um, embellishments. Oh no, the ribbon, the ribbon pack that I shared that has the lemon lime twist and the pink in it. And then, um, and then paper. So here are the dies that coordinate with it. Zany Zoo, Zany Zoo stamps and Zany Zoo dies. You can see that all of these little characters can get cut out with the frame dies. You've got this fun little wave, which is also a pattern that's in the designer paper. Then you've got these tiny little pieces, balloons, trees, a pot, some little flowers, um, a curtain. Yeah, just fun stuff. So now let's look at, let's look at the papers. And I wanna show you the papers and the stamp set kind of at the same time. So do you see in here, there is a skunk. The skunk is the same skunk as this. So your skunk die will cut out from the paper and from the stamp image. None of the other images on here, all these other animals have to get fussy cut. But then you have the next paper and there's the tiger or the leopard or whatever it is. Okay, so let me show you. This is the front side and the back side of this paper. So on this one, we have the front and the back. And the, the character on this one is, I don't know, is it a cheetah maybe? <laughs> it has spots, so maybe it's a leopard, but that's the one that can be cut with the dies. And then all the others can be fussy cut. You got dancers on that one, so cute. The other one was campers. And now we have musicians, front and back side. On this one, I believe it's the singing, yeah, the singing turtle. Great for baby cards, yes indeed. Here's the front and back of this one. And on this one, you have the llama who is knitting. So these are kind of like people hanging out at home and relaxing. Not people, animals hanging out at home and relaxing. And then you've got those going out on their wheeled um, rides, whether they're skates or a scooter or a bicycle, front and back. And the one that can be cut from this one is the alligator slash crocodile. I'm not sure which one technically it is. Hey, Melanie. <laughs> and then on this one, we have the, um, oh yeah, the raccoon with the balloons, front and back of that one. So you got party ears. So you have all these different themes that you can do for your cards based on the images that are in the papers and the stamp set. You wanna have all three of these at least. And obviously the ribbon, you might as well just get the suite. So there's the Zany Zoo in the Zoo Crew suite. The next suite, which I have the full pieces of, are, um, it's the suite called Fresh as a Daisy. The suites are named after their paper. Did you know that? If you look at the paper names, that's the name of the suite. At least that's the way it's been. Okay, so here are the dies, and here's the stamps. And you can see that you've got dies that match up with the shape of these guys here. So you have an outline, and you have an inside layer, 
but you also have these pieces. So I discovered this as I was sharing this uh, suite with our team. Um, this lines up with this and this. So you can have a, la a flower that is three layers deep with, you know, you can have different colors on those and all that sort of thing. You also have a label piece here. You have some other frame type dies, um, maybe a center of a flower, and then you've got some branch pieces here. This one is all one piece. So you get to cut it all at once and have an instant little layer for a card. You've got fun sayings on here, especially this one, oops a daisy. So very fun. Okay, so if we're gonna layer that up, you can see we've got this piece, then we've got this piece, and then we've got one more that can go right on the top of that. There we go. So you see how they, they're gonna all layer up. You have three layers that you can put on those on those cards with your pieces. Now, if you're gonna take and cut these both out at the same time, connected together, you're gonna get little outlines like that. If you like that, great. <laughs> That's not what I intended to do, but it's kind of a different look, isn't it? That one works as a flower pretty well. All right, so there's the stamps and dies. Then you have the embellishments, and the embellishments in that suite are the adhesive back solid gems, yeah. And they come in lemon, lolly lemon lolly boho blue and i believe that's the copper clay color the this pack of designer paper has lots of the um well all of the in colors and then a few of the new colors too so you have azure afternoon boho blue bubble bath cajun craze copper clay crush curry early espresso garden green lemon lolly moody muff pebbled path pretty peacock and wild wheat so you get a sampling of tons of new colors with this pack of paper. Here's the A and B side. So the B side is kind of like one solid brushed on painted background. The A and B side of that one. And there's that one. It's got kind of that green color and the pretty peacock in there, doesn't it? And then here is this one like a hand-painted look, right? Hand-painted with oils or acrylics or whatever, just pretty. This is my favorite. I love this. And I really, I really love that wild wheat color. I think it's gonna be amazing with cards. Now here, you have instant cards. So unless you, you know, wanna use the Moody Mauve side, you can take and cut up all of these layers and have instant card fronts or card layer pieces, you know, great for that. So we'll set that off to the side along with these guys here and we'll bring in the last pile. The last pile has some bundles and just some single stamp sets. So this is the Circle Sayings stamp set um, and the two and three eighths inch circle. Yay! I love that they're bringing circle punches back you guys. I can't tell you how excited I am about that. These are staples, right? So when you stamp these, you can then punch them out and you have little layers for your cards. So you can punch this out, this, you know what I mean? It's within the circle. So fun, fun um, two-step kind of stuff with that too, because you can do like the floral and then you can do like the words underneath it. This is the um, Beauty of the Deep dies and Beauty of the Deep stamps. Okay, all of these are frame type dies except for these three. These three here give you that look, and this one, and this one. So little pieces of coral, detailed coral. Gorgeous. No words in this stamp set, but you can combine it with another stamp set that has words, right? Okay, so there's that. Then we've got this unique one. This is really cool. Timeless Arrangements. And do you see these fun dies that come? These are the timeless arrangement dies, and these are the words. And you can see that you can take and cut this out and then stamp within, and it's photopolymer, so you can stamp it after you've cut it, but it's got these fun little extensions on the um, pieces. So you've got you know, little floral areas coming off the sentiments. You've also got some stitch sentiment frame pieces, some extra little embellishment, um, like this detailed one here, 
these two detailed ones, and then you've got these frame pieces that match up with these images down here. Lots of words, very fun, very, very um, versatile. It's a versatile combination. This is one of my favorites. <laughs> Um, I, I went to town with some of the die cutting right away. This is called Crafting With You. We have the dies and we have the stamp set. And this kind of calls to all of us crafters, right? I think I'm too close, sorry. Because you've got your, your stampers stuff in here with the die cutting machine. You've got your painters with the easel and these pieces here. Um, you've got your knitter who's got the basket and the, the yarn and your sewer with the sewing machine and you've got words that would be great with all of them plus your dies bring in even more images. So you've got buttons, you've got shapes, you've got spools of um, thread or twine, um, you've got a scissors, you've got uh, an embroidery uh, frame, I think that's what they're called. You've got a ruler and these are out, this ruler is actually precise with centimeters you guys that if you die cut it you get here I'll show you it lines up with centimeters <laughs> so there's my silver ruler and then you've got this you've got a little mini um, machine a, a little mini trimmer which I have yet to still put together but I'm going to so yeah I've got my little pieces here ready to to create a, a mini trimmer fun right oh my goodness sakes how cute is this going to be hang on i'm going to show you that one later um here's my <laughs> this i probably should have done this in like a, a more wooden color like crumb cake or something but there's my my little embroidery frame thing needlepoint oh and here's the basket super cute it has embossing in it and then here's my thread or twine and here's my scissors so it comes in two pieces and I put a brad in between I cut the legs short on the brad and I made a workable scissors <laughs> it's my favorite I love it so much <laughs> I can just sit and look at this thing all day it's so stinking cute it looks like our paper snips doesn't it <laughs> all right so I hope that you enjoyed that. We have prize time now. Prizes, prizes, prizes. Let's bring back the prizes that we had for choices last time. I don't know why I brought these back in. <laughs> the prizes that we had for choices last time. You get a bundle of daubers and you get, and I can't remember how many we said. Was it, was it three? I have to look again. Let's start with three. Um, and then I'll, I'll let the winners know if, if it's more than that. But anyways, yes, you get to choose from some spots. These are unopened ink spots that I've collected. I just get a lot because I'm a kit collector. I love kits. Um, so yeah, if your name is picked, then you get to pick out some spots and you get one of these mailed to you. If you live outside the U.S., by the way, then I can... Um, sorry, I'm going to my computer now. If you live outside the U.S., I can send you... A tutorial bundle so you're not gonna miss out even though I can't technically send product um, okay so now we're gonna take and change the screen and I'm gonna announce the winners from the after live comments from last week so we had and I'm gonna put up my email address there because you're gonna want to reach out to me we had from is this uh, YouTube this is YouTube Judy Estrada you are the winner from the after live comments from last week's um, actually two weeks ago because last week we didn't do prizes so two weeks ago your comment um, earned you the prize so yay for Judy and then on Facebook commenters from Facebook we had Terry McIntosh stock you were the winner um, for the after live or during live comments because we include both um, and so email me you gals stamp your art out at comcast.net and now I'm going to go and check my computer in a different way here. Um, I'm going to show you the prizes first. I'm not sure if sometimes our timing isn't completely exactly the same, but Trish is going to draw out prize winners. Before you do that, unless you have already, I'm going to show you what the prizes are that you get to choose from you guys. I have some stamp sets that are retiring or maybe already have 
that I have not opened or touched. <laughs> There's a few. So decorative borders, kindest gnomes. And it's not that I don't like them, it's just that I didn't have time. Kindest gnomes, amazing year, treasured kindness, tropical hideaway, garden grandeur, 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 <laughs> and begin with a dream. Yes, these last two are host sets. I never got to these, you guys. So the winners are Katherine Thaxton and Mary Stamp All. Stamp All? I love it. Okay, I'm going to find your comment now, and I'm going to click on it and take my email address away. And my head is covered up, but that's okay. Katherine Thaxton and Mary Stamp All. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Pick one of these stamp sets, get back to me. Again, if you live outside the U.S., just, you know, reach out to me and let me know and we can still send you a tutorial, okay? Um, as far as news, I talked to you about Last Chance products. Those are disappearing, so make sure that you visit the online store. Oops, wrong one. Didn't mean to do that. Hang on. <laughs> make sure you visit the online store. I'm going to bring you over there. So you can see the Stampin' Up! store is at stampinup.com. You're going to click there and you can either scroll and try to pick stuff or it's easier to just click on the menu and pick stuff. But yeah, under specials, we have the last chance products. Shop from those. Don't shop from a list that you may have downloaded because the lists can be out of date. You want to pick things that are still available. Some things are gone. All right. Um, also, those things are available through May 1st unless they sell out and then the new catalog begins May 2nd. Um, we have two new kits that are um, available. One is to purchase now and the other one is to sign up for. So let me let me see if I can find that, that information here. Um, oh, I know where I put it. That's my blog, by the way. Um, here. So this is one of the kits and I forgot the name of it. Something Friendship. Shoot. It's one of the new kits in the kits collection and they just put it in the online store today. So you can pick that kit. You can purchase that today. Um, there's also this kit that you can get subscribed for. This is the next Paper Pumpkin kit. So if you're a Paper Pumpkin fan, make sure that you're, you're all ready to go for that one. That one's going to feature new in colors. And this is my blog. So if you're interested in learning more about what I share, you can either visit my blog. You can, um, you know, click on some of these these menus here. This is a really important one. If you click here, I have someone calling me for some reason. If you click here and you go to my project library, because people have been asking me, how do I find this project? You can go to my project library area and you can see a quick glance at some of the projects that I've shared over the past recent years. You can click on that and it'll take you right to the blog post that shares more information about that project. So I hope we didn't get disconnected by the way. I hope not. I had a phone call coming through, which is weird because my, my phone is on silence. Um, so there, hopefully you're still with me. Are you still with me, you guys? <laughs> I hope so. Um, I think that is it. Oh, I have one other proud thing to share. One other. This is new. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta show it off. This is a new stamp set you can get too, but you can't get it until May second. Um, even if you're a demonstrator, this is not on the pre-order list. This is um, my Million Achiever stamp set. I'm coming up with cards. I'm gonna try to create them all. Um, using some of the new product too. And then hopefully by the end of next week, I'll be able to share with you the details of my upcoming class that you can take through the mail or through email type of thing. So there'll be op options. Anyways, um, that's it. So I would like you all now to just go and stamp your art out and have a great day. Enjoy the weather if it's good where you're at. It is here. All right, take care everyone. Bye-bye.